Hello everyone. Hope you have understood the previous lecture that is introduction to the digital signal processing. We will start with the actual syllabus of DSP that is digital signal processing. So the first module covers discrete Fourier transform and its properties. So we are going to cover about the frequency domain sampling and reconstruction of the discrete time signals, discrete Fourier transform, discrete Fourier transform as linear transformation, then we are going to study about the properties. Now in the previous video lecture I had explained you how to convert a time domain sequence to frequency domain, why the time domain sequence is converted to frequency domain. In frequency domain, the analysis of the signal is far easier compared to the analysis of the signal in the time domain. Thus, different transforms are used to convert the time domain sequence to frequency domain. If the time domain sequence, it is continuous in nature and if it is periodic, we make use of Fourier series. Now if the signal in time domain is continuous and if it is non-periodic then in that case we make use of the Fourier transform. Similarly if the time domain sequence is discrete periodic we make use of DTFS that is discrete time Fourier transform, Fourier series. Similarly, if the input signal that is the time domain sequence is discrete non-periodic, then we make use of DTFT that is discrete time Fourier transform. So what exactly happens in the frequency domain? In the frequency domain, once we apply Fourier series, we get discrete non-periodic signal. What does this mean? This means a continuous periodic signal in the ti time domain. You apply Fourier series and you get discrete non-periodic signal in the frequency domain. Discrete periodic signal in the time domain, you apply DTFS, you will get discrete periodic signal in the frequency domain. Continuous non-periodic signal in the time domain, you apply Fourier transform, you will get continuous non-periodic signal in the frequency domain. Discrete non-periodic signal in the time domain, you apply DTFT, you will get continuous periodic signal in the frequency domain. What does this imply? You have a continuous periodic signal, you apply Fourier series then you are going to get in frequency domain discrete non-periodic signal. Similarly, discrete periodic signal, you apply DTFS to get discrete periodic signal in the frequency domain. Continuous non-periodic signal, you apply Fourier transform to get continuous non-periodic signal in the frequency domain. Discrete non-periodic signal, when you apply DTFT, that is discrete time Fourier transform, you get continuous periodic signal. Now, our interest is the last one, that is while applying discrete signal in the time domain, when we convert it into the frequency domain, what exactly happens? Generally, when I am now applying a discrete non-periodic signal in the time domain, I let us say perform DTFT. So when discrete Fourier transform is performed, we are getting a continuous periodic signal. This continuous periodic signal, because it is continuous in nature, it cannot be used in, it cannot be used in digital signal processors. Why? Because digital signal processors take digital signals as the input 
it processes the digital signals and produces digital signals as the output so the input to the digital signal processor should be discrete in nature but this particular signal is continuous in nature so because the signal is continuous in nature we have to convert this to digital signal how do we convert it we perform sampling operation how sampling operation is done sampling operation is done by applying the input signal you are applying the input signal x of t which is a cos omega t through a switch you assume that this particular switch closes at every capital t intervals of time okay so that what does this mean you have a signal like this so when you have a signal for example i have not drawn a cos omega t some signal i have drawn so here in this particular case every time the switch closes at capital t intervals of time that means we can say that multiples of capital t at t small t is equal to multiples of capital t if the switch is closing at that instant what is the value of the input signal that will pass to the output and because immediately the switch is going to open as soon as it closes immediately it is going to open next next fraction of a second the output will be zero what does this mean let us say at t equal to zero we have taken the first sample and next at t equal to capital t we have taken the switch is closed so when the switch is closed at t equal to capital t at that instant what is the amplitude of the signal that will be passed to the output and next and the switch will open so output remain becomes zero again at t equal to capital to capital t the switch is going to close so at this instant t equal to 2t whatever is the amplitude of the signal that will pass to the output that means that impulse you are going to get similarly at t equal to 3t again the switch is closed at this particular time what is the amplitude of the signal at that time t equal to 3t what is the value of the signal that passes to the output so this goes on and finally what you are going to get you are going to get samples in this way train of samples at t equal to 0 the uh, value of the sample is 0 at t equal to capital t a particular value and at t equal to 2t then t equal to 3t like this you are going to get a train of impulses so this train of impulses is nothing but the samples or in other words you have performed the sampling operation this is the general basics of performing the sampling operation uh, now this sampling can be explained by taking an example now let us say a dark room is there in this dark room three pairs of uh, three socks have been kept three socks in which two socks are of same color one socks is of different color so that means one pair of socks and one in single socks has been placed in this black room the dark room now you go inside pick one sock and come just one sock you are going to pick it up and come out will you be able to wear that socks and go out you you have brought only one socks but you require two socks to wear and then go so that means when one socks is being picked up this is not sufficient okay but let us say you go inside and bring two socks now when you bring two socks both the socks can be of same color or different color so when they are of same color then you are lucky enough you can wear those socks put on those socks and wear the shoes otherwise if they are of different colors once again uh, it is not sufficient it does not satisfy our requirement so if i go inside and bring three socks obviously i am going to get one pair proper pair i am going to get out of these three socks which will satisfy my requirement i can put on those socks and then wear the shoes so what does this imply this implies 
this is an example showing sampling theorem what does the sampling theorem say fs should be greater than or equal to 2fm that means when fs is less than 2fm what will happen fs equal to 2fm what will happen and fs greater than 2fm what will happen if fs is less than 2fm it is under sampling it is under sampling what do you mean by under sampling under sampling means you are not able to reconstruct back the original signal from the samples you have got it is as if you are bringing one sock from the dark room then that is not sufficient for us or it does not satisfy our requirement next fs is equal to 2 fm we call it as the nyquist criteria we call it as nyquist criteria it is as if you are bringing two socks okay so when you bring two socks you will you may get both the socks of same color that means pair of socks or you may get the two socks of different color so this is the border case where your requirement may be satisfied now fs greater than 2 fm it is over sampling this we call it as over sampling and this condition is getting three socks from the dark room so our requirement will be satisfied so that's why the sampling theorem says fs greater than or equal to 2 fm where fs is the sampling frequency sampling frequency means frequency at which the samples have to be taken and this sampling frequency is greater than or equal to twice the frequency of the message signal or the inform signal carrying the information i hope you have understood the sampling theorem now here x of t is a cos 2 pi ft where f is the frequency of the input signal or here it is equal to fm so this 2 pi f has been written as capital omega so capital omega is the angular frequency capital omega is the angular frequency it is uh, its unit is radians per second now when you are going to get the output whenever the switch closes so you have a cos 2 pi f in place of small t we replace it with n capital t that is a cos omega nt now or 2 pi f nt capital t is the sampling period which can be written as 1 by fs so t is replaced with 1 by fs so then in that case 2 pi f by fs is written as small omega and small omega is the digital frequency and its unit is radians and it is dimensionless so or in other words capital omega into t is equal to small omega so omega is equal to 2 pi f by fs or it is equal to omega t and small omega is digital frequency capital omega is analog frequency capital t is just now i have told you capital t is the sampling period or sampling time interval and fs is 1 by t or it is equal to the sampling frequency so what we are doing we are taking the input signal x of n this signal x of n that it, that is in time domain it is discrete in nature and it is finite duration sequence finite duration sequence now this finite duration sequence you are going to apply dtft so when dtft is performed what you are going to get when dtft is performed 
in frequency domain you get x of omega or in short x of e to the power of j omega e x of e to the power of j omega we write it as x of omega this x of omega is continuous periodic in nature now because this continuous periodic signal cannot be applied to a digital signal processor we have to perform sampling and quantization what the sampling and quantization do sampling and quantization is going to convert this continuous signal into digital signal that means both the time axis as well as the amplitude are discretized now after sampling is performed and x of omega is converted we get x of k wherein basically what we do we are going to replace omega with 2 pi k by n what does this actually mean your x of omega is a continuous signal and let us say it is periodic i am showing you just one period now this continuous periodic signal x of omega here in this case omega is going to range from 0 to 2 pi so from 0 to 2 pi let us say i have taken one cycle so what we are doing is we are taking the samples of this continuous signal How, at what intervals we are taking now this period is 2 pi and in this 2 pi period we want n samples we want n samples so every 2 pi by n every 2 pi by n interval of time we are taking one one sample or in other words we write it as 2 pi k by n so when k equal to 0 we get the first sample at omega equal to 0 that is this point next at k equal to 1 i am going to get that is at 2 pi by n i am going to get the next sample now at k equal to 2 that is at 4 pi by n we are going to get the next sample similarly k equal to 3 so 6 pi by n we are going to get the next sample so like that it goes on finally at k equal to n minus 1 we are going to get one more sample that means 2 pi into n minus 1 by n we are going to get the last sample of the cycle from 0 to 2 pi into n minus 1 by n we have n number of samples this duration we have n number of samples and what is the distance what is the spacing between any two samples spacing between any two samples that is delta omega is equal to 2 pi by n this is how sampling takes place so the complete 2 pi duration of that one cycle of continuous periodic signal in that one cycle we take n samples so that every 2 pi by n intervals of time we take the samples so thus n samples per cycle are taken so, or in other words the sampling is performed and this continuous periodic signal will be converted to digital periodic signal this is continuous periodic so this is converted to digital periodic signal now this digital periodic signal from that we take one cycle of samples this one cycle of samples we take to get finite duration sequence so now this is digital and finite duration sequence and this we represent it as x of k i'll repeat once again the time domain sequence x of n which is discrete in nature and finite duration duration sequence we apply dtft to convert from time domain to frequency domain 
but discrete finite duration sequence when we apply DTFT we get continuous periodic signal. So this continuous periodic signal we are going to perform sampling operation so that we get digital periodic signal. So this digital periodic signal from this digital periodic signal one cycle is taken from digital periodic signal one cycle is taken and that we call it as x of k that means that will be digital finite duration sequence what is discrete Fourier transform so here in this case I have told you that finally we get a digital finite duration sequence so instead of going through all these steps like performing DTFT then performing sampling and quantization then taking just one cycle of the periodic signal to get x of k instead directly we can perform DFT that is discrete Fourier transform can be applied on this time do domain sequence x of n so to get x of k. So x of n is finite duration sequence let us say the samp L samples are present in x of n then x of k you have uh, uh, it is a digital finite duration sequence and n samples are present in x of k n samples are present you can see that we have taken n samples per every per cycle so that when we take one cycle from the digital periodic signal we get n samples now if we have to reconstruct back if we have to reconstruct back x of n from x of k the condition should be that n should be greater than or equal to l n is the number of samples we have taken in the frequency domain l is the number of samples present in the time domain sequence so n should be greater than or equal to l if this condition satisfies then x of n can be obtained or reconstructed back from x of k uh, now previously also i explained you sampling theorem where fs is greater than or equal to 2 fm what exactly happens when fs is less than 2 fm under sampling occurs or aliasing occurs wherein frequency components get mixed up and you are not able to reconstruct back the original signal so either fs should be equal to 2 fm or greater than 2 fm for reconstructing back the original signal same way here n should be greater than or equal to l to reconstruct back x of n from x of k or to get back x of n from x of k thus what is discrete Fourier transform it is a powerful computation tool that performs frequency analysis of digital signals now the time domain signal is converted to frequency domain representation to perform frequency analysis on discrete signals that are that use for Fourier transform now x of omega is continuous function of frequency and therefore it is not a convenient representation of the digital signal x of n thus this spectrum of x of omega is sampled using dft the sample discrete Fourier transform of a finite duration discrete time signal we call it as dft and it contains finite number of samples equal to n of the given signal so dft it is a computational tool for analyzing frequency analysis of discrete time signals now what is the need for sampling I have explained you everything so we have to go through like what is the need for sampling I had already explained you that when we perform DTFT we get continuous periodic signal which is not appropriate or it is not proper to be given as input to the digital signal processor so here what is the need means when we perform DTFT we get x of omega is equal to summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n e to the power of minus j omega n where omega it is what 
omega is the frequency of the continuous periodic signal and it ranges from 0 to 2 pi and x of omega is continuous periodic signal it is continuous periodic signal cannot be given to digital signal processor it cannot be given to digital signal processor thus to convert this to convert x of omega to digital signal sampling need to be done sampling need to be done so thus the spectrum x of omega is sampled uniformly now how how is it sampled how are you going to sample it what we are going to do is that we are going to take n equidistant samples so when we take n equidistant samples then delta of omega is equal to 2 pi by n as i have explained you previously or omega is equal to 2 pi k by n where k equal to 0 to n minus 1 then in that case x of 2 pi k by n we had x of omega is equal to summation and is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n e to the power of minus j omega n in this we substitute omega is equal to 2 pi k by n so here also we substitute omega is equal to 2 pi k by n so equal to summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n e to the power of minus j 2 pi k n by n where k is index for the samples and x of omega is calculated only at discrete values now this summation it can be divided into infinite number of summations each containing n samples or n terms thus this summation can be written as dot 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 summation I'll, I'll write the limits later here because let me write the limits of this summation first middle summation i'll take n equal to 0 to n minus 1 so this summation contains n samples x of n e to the power of minus j 2 pi n k by n now the previous summation if this summation starts from 0 previous summation should end at minus 1 now and because this summation also should contain n term n samples or n terms so from where it should start it should start from minus n so n is equal to minus n to minus 1 x of n e to the power of minus j 2 pi n k by n similarly every summation should contain n terms so here the next summation will be the summation ended at n, n minus 1 so next summation will start at the next sample that is n to 2n minus 1 x of n e to the power of minus j 2 pi n k by n and this goes on because n is equal to minus infinity to infinity so we have infinite number of summations each summation containing n samples this can be written as you can see if i have to take the summation n is equal to you can see the lower limits of all the summations here n is equal to minus n zero n so you can see the lower limits are all multiples of capital n 
similarly upper limits are all here you see minus 1 n minus 1 2n minus 1 that means multiples of n are being added to the upper limits so we can write this as summation n is equal to as i told you the, the lower limits are all multiples of capital n so multiples of capital n so i'll write it as ln and upper limits are all multi uh, you multiples of capital n is being added to n minus 1 so multiples of capital n is added to n minus 1 x of n e to the power of minus j 2 pi n k by n now because all infinite number of summations are there so this l will range from minus infinity to infinity now let us see whether whatever we have written holds good or not now l ranges from minus infinity to infinity so let us take l equal to 0 so when l equal to 0 summation we have summation substitute l equal to 0 so n will become 0 here ln will become 0 and you will get n minus 1 of this x of n e to the power of minus j 2 pi n k by n so we got this term that particular summation we have got similarly next let us say l is equal to 1 then substitute l is equal to 1 what will we get summation when i substitute l is equal to 1 the lower limit will be n and upper limit will be n plus n minus 1 that is 2n minus 1 so we got the next term next summation like that if i have l is equal to minus 1 then i have summation minus 1 if i substitute the lower limit will become minus n and upper limit will be minus n plus n minus 1 so minus 1 so i got this term like so what does this mean this means the way we have written this summation generalized and written the summation it is correct so what did we do lower limits lower limits of all the summations they are multiples of n so we wrote it as multiple of n so here ln we have used upper limits are all like multiples of n is added to n minus 1 so ln plus n minus 1 and l being varying from minus infinity to infinity now here n is equal to ln to ln plus n minus 1 i want to change this limit to 0 to n minus 1 that means from the limits from the lower limit and upper limit i want to subtract ln so if i subtract ln from the limits it means i have to add ln in place of n i have to put n plus ln that means i have to add ln inside in the inside terms so here we have x of 2 pi k by n so x of 2 pi k by n equal to summation l is equal to minus infinity to infinity summation in this summation what i am doing these limits i am subtracting ln so ln minus ln this becomes 0 and this will become n minus 1 so n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of here x of n is there because i subtracted ln from the limits i'll have to add ln here e to the power of minus j 2 pi n plus ln k by n so here minus j 2 pi in place of n we write n plus ln k by n now what we have to do we are going to take this particular summation i am going to expand this or separate out this e exponential term so i'll write it as l is equal to minus infinity to infinity summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n plus ln e to the power of minus j 2 pi n k n into k by n into e to the power of minus j 2 pi ln k by n 
so l n k by n n n gets cancelled so e to the power of minus j 2 pi l k it is cos 2 pi l k minus j sin 2 pi l k so cos 2 pi l k is 1 sin 2 pi l k is 0 so the answer is 1 so this term is 1 so we interchange the summation so we have summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 summation l is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n plus ln into e to the power of minus j 2 pi n k by n so summation l is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n plus ln how does this vary let us see when you substitute l equal to 0 you will get x of n substitute l is equal to 1 you will get x of n plus n substitute l is equal to 2 you will get x of n plus 2n etc similarly this side substitute l is equal to minus 1 you will get x of n minus n and so on you are going to get so from this what do you understand we understand that we are getting a periodic repetition of x of n with a period of capital n samples this is x of n this is x of n plus n x of n plus 2n x of n minus n so what does this mean x of n is being repeated at pe periodic intervals of capital n okay so we can represent this as xp of n a periodic signal xp of n so x of 2 pi k by n can be written as summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 so this term summation l is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n plus ln can be written as xp of n e to the power of minus j 2 pi n k by n so this equation number 3 so what is xp of n xp of n is the periodic repetition of x of n with a period of capital n samples if we have to perform reconstruction we have xp of n it is periodic signal with a fundamental period of n so that can be expanded in a four year series so you have a, pe a discrete periodic signal you have so when you have a discrete periodic signal you can apply dtfs okay so when you apply dtfs you will get discrete periodic signal in the frequency domain thus because xp of n it is periodic signal and with a period of n thus you can apply Fourier series on this or we can write xp of n as summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 that is inverse Fourier in inverse discrete time Fourier series formula you have to apply so summation k is equal to 0 to n minus 1 c k e to the power of j 2 pi n k by n this is equation number 4 so we are writing or using inverse discrete time Fourier series formula to represent xp of n because xp of n is a period discrete periodic signal where n ranges from 0 to n minus 1 and what is the ck ck are the Fourier series coefficients so ck ck is in the frequency domain xp of n is the time domain sequence so this is the inverse discrete time Fourier series formula or for discrete time Fourier series formula will give us ck and ck is 1 by n summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 xp of n 
e to the power of minus j 2 pi n k by n and k ranging from 0 to n minus 1. So, if you remember in signals and systems, you have studied discrete time Fourier series. So, these are the formula of discrete time Fourier series and inverse discrete time Fourier series. Now, we will compare uh, this expression that is equation 5 with equation 3 here. So, equation 3 and equation 5 if I compare, then you can see that the right side, if I bring n this side, n c k, if I write n c k is equal to summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x p of n e to the power of minus j 2 pi n k by n. So, this x, this right hand whatever term we have and this right hand expression of equation 3 both are same. So, from this x of 2 pi k by n is equal to n c k. So, from equation 3 and equation 5 we come to know that n c k is equal to x of 2 pi k by n or c k is equal to 1 by n x of 2 pi k by n. Now, this we are value we are going to put it in expression 4. So, substitute in expression 4. So, what will we get? x p of n is equal to summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1. Instead of c k I have 1 by n x of 2 pi k by n then into e to the power of j 2 pi k n by n. So, 1 by n it is independent of the variable k. So, I will write it as 1 by n summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of 2 pi k by n e to the power of j 2 pi k n by n. So, x p of n can be obtained back from x of 2 pi k by n. Understood? Now, what is the condition? What is the condition from, uh, because of which we will get back uh, x of n where we had started. We had actually started with x of n remember. So, to get back x of n what is the condition. Now, let us take an example as I have a signal x of n. It is a finite duration sequence. Let us say uh, this particular sequence has got four samples. Okay. This it has got four samples x of n. Now, we get x p of n. What is x p of n? x p of n is periodic repetition of x of n. So, periodic repetition of x of n means x of n has got four samples. So, every four samples uh, x of n is being repeated. So, here we have our original signal x of n, it is again repeated. The samples are repeated. Okay, this goes on. Now, we have x p of n. Now, from x p of n, let us say uh, we have taken n equal to l that means n equal to l is equal to 4 we have taken. Then in that particular case what happens from the periodic signal x p of n we are going to because n is equal to 4 we get we take 4 samples and we get back the 4 samples. So, this whatever we get back from x p of n and whatever is x of n it is same. But let us say instead of n is equal to l is equal to 4 we chose n less than l. Let us say I took n is equal to 3. So, what will happen instead of 4 samples when I choose n is equal to 3 that means 3 samples only I would have chosen and I would have got 3 samples. 
Now this three samples for n less than l condition, it is not equal to x of n. Whatever signal we got, it is not equal to x of n. Now let us say I chose uh, the value of n is equal to 5, it is greater than l which is 4. Then in that case, what happens is I would have got, the, because n is equal to 5, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, the normal signal and at n is equal to 4, I would have got a sample of z whose value is 0. So this I would have got. So generally uh, how it is, x of n has got 4 samples. If we had chosen n is equal to 5 for l uh, which is greater than l, then after every n is equal, after every 5 samples, then the samples are going of x of n are going to repeat. So we would have got the signal in this way. And then I would have chosen that one period of the samples to get back x of n. And this sequence is once again equal to the, our original sequence x of n. So the condition is that for x of n to be equal to x dash of n, this is our x dash of n, this is our x dash of n, that is one cycle which we have taken that we are representing it as x dash of n. So x of n will be equal to x dash of n when n is greater than or equal to l but it is not equal to x cap of n when n is no, uh, n is less than l okay so we have to take this condition very carefully we have seen here that if n is equal to l then also we are getting by x, x cap of n is exactly equal to x of n when we are taking n greater than l so some zeros have been appended to original x of n and still x of n and x cap of n are equal. But if n is less than l, so we are actually truncating and taking less number of samples compared to the original samples which are present in x of n. So x cap of n in this case, x cap of n is not equal to x of n. What is the condition? The condition is that the reconstruction of the periodic signal xp of n, it is possible from the samples of the spectrum which we have seen from this particular equation. xp of n is equal to 1 by n summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of 2 pi k by n e to the power of j 2 pi k n by n. But xp of n, it is periodic extension of x of n and x of n can be recovered from xp of n if there is no aliasing or mixing of signals in the time domain. That means there should be sufficient sample points in the frequency domain. If x of n is time limited to less than the period capital N of xp of n, then there is no aliasing or distortion. That is x of n is finite duration sequence with range 0 to L minus 1 or L samples and n is greater than or equal to l so we can recover back x of n from xp of n without any ambiguity but if n is less than l that means the time period of xp of n is less than the samples of x of n then it is not possible to recover x of n from its periodic extension due to time domain aliasing so the spectrum of a periodic discrete time signal with finite duration L can be exactly recovered from the samples when N is greater than or equal to L. That is what I have told you. Okay. And what is X of N then? X of N is equal to our XP of N where we are taking the samples from Z, like n ranging from 0 to capital N minus 1 and 0 elsewhere. So we are actually truncating or taking n samples n samples from the, X, uh, the signal xp of n. So those n samples will be equal to x of n and this, con this reconstruction of x of n from xp of n is possible 
only if n is greater than or equal to l otherwise as i had explained you here uh, in this in this uh, first example n is equal to l that is 4 so you can see after every four samples uh, x of n is repeated that is xp of n is obtained by periodic repetition of x of n and here the period is n is equal to 4 but if but if the value of n is less than l or in this case 3 i have not drawn again but okay i will draw and show you once again here so you would have got 1 2 3 1 2 3 because uh, the fourth there is no place for the fourth sample to come ac ac actually because once the fourth sample occurs 1 2 3 fourth samples of x of n occurs and at this point only once again repetition starts because we have taken l is equal to 3 so after three samples next cycle starts so three, you will you will be getting only three three samples you will not you don't have space for the fourth sample here or aliasing has occurred fourth sample in place of fourth sample once again the first sample has come and sat in that position so in case where n is less than l you will get only three samples the fourth sample is lost that is the reason why we say that x of n is not equal to x cap of n when n is less than l the spectrum of x of omega for the continuous time signal can be expressed for the non aliasing condition n greater than or equal to l it can be expressed as we already had written this expression x of n is equal to 1 by n summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of 2 pi k by n e to the power of j 2 pi k n by n and n ranging from 0 to n minus 1 now initial uh, first equation we had x of omega is equal to summation n is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n e to the power of minus j omega n and here we replace x of n as 1 by n this particular expression i am writing it here xp of n now has been replaced with x of n here because we know that from xp of n we get back x of n and this expression i am substituting in place of x of n so 1 by n summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of 2 pi k by n e to the power of j 2 pi k n by n and then e to the power of minus j omega n so this part we have written in place of x of n and then e to the power of minus j omega n so interchanging the summations so we get summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of 2 pi k by n into 1 by n summation n is equal to minus infinity to infinity now here i take uh, n common j common i'll take so i will get e to the power of minus j omega minus 2 pi k by n into n i've taken j minus j common i've taken the small n common so here i have omega minus 2 pi k by n now what is this particular expression we can relate this expression to basic interpolation function now what is basic interpolation function p of omega is given by 1 by n summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 e to the power of minus j omega n and this can be written as this is uh, this is summation in the form of summation a to the power of n where a is e to the power of minus j omega i can write this as 1 by n 1 minus e to the power of minus j omega upper limit plus 1 so n by 1 minus e to the power of minus j omega so if i take uh, e to the power of minus j omega by 2 common and here e to the power of minus 
j omega n by 2 common we will get this as sin omega n by 2 by sin omega by 2 into e to the power of minus j omega n minus 1 by 2 we will get okay now uh, this is the basic interpolation function now we can relate this interpolation function to this particular uh, term we have here uh, that is uh, this n is equal to minus infinity to infinity now we had taken that x of n is finite duration sequence so if it is finite duration sequence in this formula in place of minus infinity to infinity i can uh, replace it with 0 to n minus 1 because we are taking the samples from 0 to n minus 1 so in that case this is nothing but this particular expression is nothing but the basic interpolation function shifted by 2 pi k by n in frequency domain or we can write this as summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of 2 pi k by n now 1 by n summation this whole thing 1 by n summation e to the power of minus j whole of this can be written as p of omega minus 2 pi k by n that means basic interpolation function shifted by 2 pi k by n units okay and n should be greater than or equal to l is the condition from this we get the relationship between the interpolation function and our uh, dft uh, and x of n we are going to get the relationship okay the phase shift in e in uh, this particular equation it indicates uh, that x of n is causal finite duration sequence of length n and uh, the interpolation formula gives exact sample values x of 2 pi k by n for omega equal to 2 pi k by n so uh, we will stop at this particular point uh, i hope all of you have understood what is the need for frequency sampling and how we are going to uh, from the frequency sampling and uh, uh, after applying dtft how exactly we are going to get the digital signal from the continuous periodic signal digital and finite duration signal in the frequency domain and how how can we reconstruct back our original signal from these samples which we have got so we will continue uh, the dft that is discrete fourier transform uh, in the next lecture thank you